Ready Player One. So Ready Player One tells the story based off the book that's right here because I'm cool and I know how to read. And the film adaptation follows basically the same plot. Wade Watson is a teenage kid from the far out future of 2045. However, his everyday life is just a little different with a system called the Oasis. It's a virtual reality where almost everything and anything does happen, consumes everyone's time and effort. The creator of the Oasis, James Halliday, has passed away and left three Easter eggs inside the game. First person to collect all three gets full control of the Oasis and half a trillion dollars. Wade, with his knowledge of 80s pop culture and a few friends to help him out, will take the first steps in attempting to win over the Oasis. And that's all pretty much it without giving any spoilers to you guys. This is a spoiler free review. I'm just going to tell you what I liked about the film, what I didn't like, hit you with a rating system just like this one, breaking down the elements of the film and giving you a final ranking. Okay, yes, right off the bat, let's address it. I am one of the people who actually read the book. I very much enjoyed it. I had fun reading it. It was one of those books I couldn't turn down, but also take that with a grain of salt because this is probably the 10th book in my life that I have read, and I don't even think that's something to brag about. I think I need to have read a lot more books. And my main purpose for reading it was because I found out Steven Spielberg would be the one to adapt this film way back when it was announced. And we know in the past what Steven Spielberg can do with adapted material, Jaws, Jurassic Park, those are all films that were based off books that he adapted to pretty famous material. So I wanted to see what a man like Steven Spielberg could bring to Ready Player One. But even with me reading the book, I am going to review this movie as if I had not read the book. I'm going to take everything separate. I'm not going to nitpick at this was different, they didn't do this, I preferred how the book did that. Obviously there is a time for that and I will do that later in the review, but for now I'm going to review it as just a film. Starting off with the positives, the cast, Ty Sheridan as a main character, Wade. He was pretty suitable. A lot of these characters are mainly just voice acting. Now there are chunks of the film that take place in the real world, but most of the time you will be hearing them just voice over avatars in the Oasis. But honestly, my favorite character in this film, and it should come to no surprise because it's a man who holds an Oscar in his mantle, is Mark Rylance. Mark Rylance as James Halliday, completely different from what he was in the book, but I really liked it. The best comparison I have to Mark Rylance's character as James Halliday is Garth from Wayne's World. I know that might seem a little weird, but he seems like the older version of what Garth would grow up to be. So every time Mark Rylance's character came on screen, my face lit up. I was very happy to see him. I think he did a great job as James Halliday. I am going to say this film is going for a blockbuster entertaining value, and it definitely brings that, especially with all the pop culture reference. It doesn't just take from the 80s. A lot of it is from the 80s, but there's a lot of modern stuff in it. And almost every frame of this movie when they're in the Oasis is just a bunch of Easter eggs. I'm looking at the background, my characters are talking, I'm like, oh, that's from that movie and that's from this movie. So that's really fun and adds to a repeat value for this film, makes me wanna go back and see all the little things I missed. Adding off that point, there is some fan service in this film, and I can't say it's specific fan services because there were things in this film that would pop up and I'm like, that looks familiar and the audience would start clapping out of nowhere and I'm like ah oh, I guess that's just a reference I don't understand. So there's definitely something in here that will catch someone's eye. The action is fun and creative, the easter eggs and challenges they have to do throughout the film are also enjoyable. So I'm definitely going to say this film was entertaining, fun to watch, had me laughing in a few moments, not a lot but a good amount of time. Still with all that said, as much fun as I had with the film, as many times as it made me smile, as much as I enjoyed it. This is not going to go down as one of Spielberg's best adaptations. Leading me to the negatives on the film, when you're adapting a book into movie form, there's obviously things you have to change, have to let go, characters you can't bring in, and stuff and pieces from the book that you're going to have to just not bring in because of time constraints. This film gives itself a generous 2 hours and 20 minutes, which I think is a lot and plenty good time for you to bring all the stuff in the book into one film. And I'm going to say Steven Spielberg does a great job at fitting in all the important parts of the book into the movie. What it does fail at doing is one, it doesn't bring the urgence or the importance of what it is to win this easter egg hunt. Throughout the film, Wade does team up with a few members to try and get this easter egg done and out of the hands of an evil corporation. While that's great and all, the element of survival of the fittest that on your own, that suspense that your friend can turn into your enemy real quick, 
just because you want that Easter egg, half a trillion dollars and ownership of the Oasis. You don't just have an evil corporation as your enemy, your best friend and even love interest could be your enemy. So the film failed to bring that aspect into the movie. Other negative I have about the film is actually the villains involved. So there's one main villain and then there's a sidekick to the villain. And these guys were complete goofballs. They were doofuses throughout the film. They did not come off as threatening. The main villain who is the CEO of this corporation who wants the Oasis to use it as funds for advertising and make it a membership. They make him a complete idiot. They don't make it seem like this guy is actually running a big company that is the head of a large search for this Easter egg. And his sidekick villain, who is voiced by TJ Miller, was just hilarious. He was just funny to have on screen. You know him from Deadpool. He always has his comments, and his voice is super familiar. At least it is to me. So yeah, not a threatening figure, but is funny to have on screen. And last negative I'm going to add to the film, and this is something I know they probably can't avoid, but I was expecting a better adaptation from a man like Steven Spielberg, is that a good beginning of this movie, and even sometimes in the middle, there's heavy narration, and the narration is all exposition. And it's stuff that I feel Steven Spielberg could have just showed us instead of telling us. They explain to you everything the Oasis is, how it got created, what you can do in it, all within about 10 to 15 minutes, and then it just goes in straight to trying to find the first Easter egg. But I understand maybe that's something they can't get away from that. They couldn't understand how to write or maybe explain it or show it in the film without just being bluntly and spoon feeding the audience. So for Ready Player One, I'm gonna give action four stars just because that final sequence has a lot of surprises, a lot of fun. It's just a nerdgasm of Easter eggs. Every frame is something amazing. And throughout the film, especially that beginning race, that was really fun and I love seeing the DeLorean from Back to the Future. Comedy in the film, I'm gonna give three stars. The comedy was average, it did land the jokes it needed to. The most funny person to me was TJ Miller's character, as well as H, Wade's friend in the Oasis. Drama in the film, I'm gonna give two and a half stars. It did not do a great job with building up that suspense and the purpose and the importance of doing this on your own and the betrayal your friends can have on you. Horror in the film, I'm gonna give half a star just because there are some familiar faces from 80s horror to 90s horror in this film that I think would be a lot of fun for some fans, but maybe scary for some people. Suspense in the film, I'm gonna give two and a half stars. That just comes back to them not developing the importance of the hunt, of what it could mean to win, or really what could happen if the company wins. They bring it up, but they don't really expand on it. Casual fans, I'm gonna give it an A minus. Cinephiles, I'm gonna give it a B minus. And critically, I'm going to give it a B minus. So overall, Ready Player One deserves to be seen in a theater. So that's just my opinion on the film, guys. Let me know what you thought about the film if you got around to seeing it. If you did read the book, please let me know your opinions. If you think the book was better or if the movie was better, always happy to comment back with you guys. But as always, I'm Chris. Take care.